saw the kayak. He didn't like that. Oh, yeah. Oh, right under the surface. Wow. Wow. What a fight. That's awesome. There we go. Woohoo! Number three. Number three. Chrome and blue cripple lure. He's got it all twisted up. There we go. Chrome and blue, baby. <laughs> it's a go to, no doubt about it. When you're in doubt, put on a cripple lure and uh, you see the results right there. Let's get this guy in the stringer and, and get going again. I'm going to come right back to that same area. That area is pretty darn productive. Fishhuntshoot.com offers a variety of tackle as well as rods and reels designed to get you on more and bigger fish. Check it out today at Fishhuntshoot.com. Howdy folks, Kel Kellogg here. Um, my buddy Ben down in Modesto uh, reached out to me with a really good question. He asked me, how does the angle of the sun affect your trolling strategy and uh, I'm not sure if it does on a you know a minute by minute basis but I will tell you this I spent a lot of time out on a boat with Gary Morales and he had a camera on his downrigger and we noted that when the sun was at our back the lures put off a significant higher level of flash than when we were trolling into the sun or when the sun was was to our side um, so much so that that it was it was really stark. You probably got 50% more flash off of a spoon like a humdinger when the sun was at our back. Um, kind of like it is right now. Right now, my lures, I, I just know from what we did with his camera that I'm getting maximum flash off of my spoons. The question is, does that matter? And I think sometimes yes. I mean, obviously, if the water's murkier, you want more flash. Here at Sugar Pine today, the water's crystal clear, so I don't know if it's a significant consideration. Um, other situations when it might matter a great deal is when you're kokanee fishing. Too much flash, you know, later in the morning can actually scare them. So you might want to factor that in. You might want to troll into the sun if you suspect you're feeling spooky. The main thing is, is, is be aware that it is a consideration. When you got the sun at your back, if you're running spoons, you're getting more flash off the backs of those lures. I mean, think about it. The, the nose of the lure is relatively stationary, but the back is kicking around. You got the sun angling in on the back of that lure. Naturally, you're going to get more flash. So what you, what you have to do is decide, does it matter? Am I getting more strikes when the sun is shining in the back of the boat? If so, play that to your advantage. You know, you might go as far as to say, I'm going to troll down this bank and then I'm going to pull the lines and I'm going to motor back up to the top of my troll with the big motor to maximize my trolling time with the sun at the back of the boat. Conversely, you might find out that it seems like I'm catching most of my fish or getting most of my strikes when I'm trolling into the sun. So pay attention to those details, but just keep in mind, yes, it does significantly alter the sun angle. It does significantly alter the way your lures look and the amount of flash that they put off. That's a great question, Ben, and I'll bet you most people can't answer that. I was just, just lucky to be in a position to be out in a boat with Gary with a camera working off a downrigger, and uh, we learned a lot about fishing in a short amount of time. We learned about how lures look, and we also learned about the temperament of fish. Um, I'll tell you this, and then I'll shut up. You have fish following your gear a lot of the time. There are almost always fish on your gear. Most of them don't strike. If you get two fish to come in at once, you've got a much better chance of getting a strike than one fish coming in. And uh, the other thing we notice is when fish follow a lure, lots of times they are very close to it. And uh, that seems to be part of the reason that it's important to use Procure Fish Sense. And it's also a good idea to speed up and slow down. If you can get the fish to overrun the lure a little bit, you have a pretty good chance of that fish taking a nip at that lure. Anyway, that's just some of the things we learned. Great question, Ben. If any of you guys out there have questions, shoot them my way. I love talking fish, and I love talking fish and strategy. You guys know that. And uh, anyway, if you haven't subscribed, hit that subscribe button. I'm going to jump off. I'm going to try to catch a few more trout here. I've had a pretty good morning here at... Uh, at Sugar Pine. Um, 
If you're looking for trout gear, check out the Fish Hunt Shoot store. I got some great stuff in there at good prices, quality gear that I believe in, some of the stuff I developed myself. Anyways, I will catch you guys uh, next time right here on YouTube. I want to thank you for all the support. We're having a blast doing what we're doing, and uh, I'm glad you guys are enjoying the content out there in, in YouTube country, wherever you're at, man. I've had, I've had people contact me from as far away, this past month as far away as Connecticut, New Hampshire, and of course, lots of people throughout California, Oregon, British Columbia, all the, all the West Coasters. But uh, anyway, guys, thanks a lot. I'm blessed to be doing what I'm doing and uh, couldn't be doing it at all without you guys watching my stuff and reading my articles and all that kind of stuff. So living the dream here in Northern California, guys. You have a wonderful day and uh, I will catch you again real soon right here on YouTube. I'm Kel Kellogg and I'm signing off.